Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan and today we're going to be doing the Phoenix Challenge. Uh, today we're going to be repairing a broken husk of the Empire that was the Tall Swarm. And uh, I mean, at this point, it's not really a Tall Swarm anymore. It's really a wide and bloated piece of Swiss cheese. So, of course, this is also known as episode 10 of the latest series, and this is going to be the finale. In this video, I'm going to show you how to manage the economy properly, and uh, how to get out of a tough situation in terms of uh, a war. A war where you don't have a lot of pop production, and you have massive deficits in energy and alloys. Uh, so today, first thing we're going to cover is um, the size of this thing that we're going to have to manage. The 2 quintillion IQ Swarm, massive empire with 202 systems, and uh, 420 empire size. Uh, we have a couple fleets left over in the north side of our empire, and uh, these fleets are kind of stuck there. Uh, we can't really do anything about our southern neighbor at this point, uh, because, well, they're very, very far away, and our fleets are going to take ages to get there. Uh, let's see here. 880 days, and that is with a wormhole shortcut. Jeez. Well, let's just focus our efforts over on the north, and, uh, well, try to have some defensive stations over in the south, in order to try to repel some of the exterminators. Uh, now, the good thing is, they are pathetic. And they are pathetic because they're already at war with another empire, and uh, in fact, a coalition of empires. Uh, these guys are going to be probably busy over on their western front, and so hopefully they're not going to pay too much attention to us. Of course, at this point, we should take the obligatory research. I know the icons are probably bothering some of you guys. And um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Our research is not going to be doing too well, considering the fact that we have a whopping 576 research a year 2346 with an extra 70% to technology costs due to our empire size. Now, this empire size is causing a lot of problems, but it's also producing a lot of benefits. We're making nearly a thousand minerals from all the stations and uh, nearly a thousand energy from all the stations, so all this territory is doing something. Obviously this is something that we're going to want to protect and not let go of. After all, our economy depends on it. The first and most important thing that you're going to have to do in terms of managing a deficit is uh, going to be to look at what is actually spending it. So we can see on our consume that we're spending 700 energy on ships. However, that is a price that we absolutely have to pay because otherwise we perish as an empire, surrounded on all sides by enemies. Our next biggest expense is stations and uh, we can't really afford to take them down. We have massive amounts of mineral production only because of that and uh, so taking that down is going to just shoot us in the foot. Uh, star bases though are a different question. Uh, we don't really need a lot of these shipyards, for instance, and uh, some of these resource reproducers really don't do anything for our empire. After all, we're a swarm, and uh, swarms don't trade. Now, it'd be pretty cool if we had decadent swarms just uh, playing around with toys while being controlled by an overmind, uh, but, you know, that's not the type of empire that we're managing, because that sort of empire would kind of kill over and die in these conditions. Already we had just dealt with some of our stations, uh, now we only have roughly half of what we had before, and now we have to look at some of our other expenses, namely buildings and districts. At this point we have uh, a couple buildings on our planet, and uh, only a couple because we have only three pops to manage them. Three pops and a lot of districts that are consuming a lot of energy credits. Uh, so because of that we're going to demolish some of these boundary ecologies and have just enough for our pops to work and uh, not have to suffer paying for them. After all, having factories idle by is very expensive, and at this point we cannot afford that expense. Uh, one fleet expense that we actually can take care of right now is going to be ISS Demirov. Uh, while serving in its honor as the colossus that destroyed the Grand Feeding Ground with 3,500 pops on it, well, you're going to have to go. Sorry, man. It's just the way it is. We also have a bunch of construction ships just randomly in our systems, and I'm also going to disband them. Uh, after all, they do consume extra upkeep, and this upkeep is uh, is vital to our economy. Uh, the extra armies that we have down in the south are going to help us out significantly once we start taking over the Holy Lapitarian Covenant, and so we're going to send them over near Skipiton so that we can uh, rapidly teleport them once our fleets are in range. As far as our other transport fleets go, uh, let's just split these guys and assign them to different ships. This way they're going to follow the fleets around and uh, aggressively conquer any planets within system. 
Uh, at this point, we also have a bunch of planets with nothing going on on them. And so for that, we're going to build up a couple extra colony ships, and we're going to make sure that the Spooder proliferates. Our primary foreign affairs goal is going to be to secure the Holy Lethpedian Covenant and uh, make life stuck out of them. Uh, we could, of course, do for peace, uh, but that's no fun. Let's go for a war of absolute domination uh, as a condition of winning this. At this point, with very few fleets, we're going to have to boost the way they move. So we're going to go ahead into our edicts and enable exotic gases of fuel. We don't have the actual exotic gases to afford it, and so we're going to have to buy some from the market. Uh, exotic gases of fuel, and now our ships are going to move at 15% higher speeds. Alrighty, looks good. Let's get to work. Uh, as you can see from actually disbanding some of our ships and uh, destroying some districts, we actually gain a net total of roughly 170 energy credits per month. Glorious. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind when managing an economy with an energy credit deficit is that your ships will actually suffer very significantly if you do that. So don't ever let your energy credits hit zero when you're engaged in fleet combat. Uh, because your ship says combat efficiency is going to go down more than 50%. And that is enough to make the difference between life and death. Uh, looks like at this point we are taking some of the worlds of the enemy. And now we can get some purging going. Now this is going to allow us to have some pretty good food and society production. Society doesn't really matter, but food, food really does. We can sell food on the market and uh, get some money off of it. Uh, as far as districts on these new planets go, uh, we're actually going to demolish most of them, uh, leaving just the energy districts behind. Uh, now the reason for that is going to be that we're going to resettle some of the spooters off our main planet and onto this one. This is going to allow them to actually work the job of energy producers. Uh, that is of course if we disable all the other jobs. Perfect. All the buildings on Cocker planets should be disabled. And uh, that is because the upkeep for them is quite significant. So let's go ahead, do so. And uh, let's make it happen for all the worlds. Hmm. Well, this is rather concerning. It looks like these guys are actually not going to be focusing on replaying our fleets and are just going to go down south in order to take our territory. They're attacking our hive. How dare they? Ooh, it looks like this is a big fleet. And it looks like these guys are equipped with a bunch of corvettes. Corvettes that our fleets are really not good at. So, uh... We're going to make sure that we don't engage that fleet, because if we do... High Fleet Behemoth is going to suffer some heavy losses. And that is unwanted. At this point, some of our signs, uh, at this point, some of our colony ships that we have uh, ordered previously are completely finished. So let's go ahead and colonize some of these worlds. In fact, I'm going to go for a couple more colony ships. Alright, let's pause and uh, spend some time disabling buildings. To avoid rapidly losing many pops, uh, we're actually going to resettle some of the low pop worlds onto some of the high pop worlds. That's going to allow the undesirables to last a lot longer, instead of declining at a rate of 4 a year, which is honestly quite fast. And uh, we have to make sure it's sustainable. This planet seems about right. 97 pops. Let's call it the secondary sacrificial grounds after the grand sacrificial grounds that have been sacrificed. Alrighty, hopefully that should stem some of the flow of the pops out. Oh, 
All right, the second batch of colony ships are ready. And now I can just go ahead and uh, start assigning them. Okay, let's see here. Uh, at this point, we could just dispatch a couple of our ships over to a separate fleet in order to deal with the rest of the threat over in the north. Now we can send reinforcements down in the south. Uh, speaking of the south, uh, we're doing quite well. Uh, these guys don't seem to be going at us, which is very fortunate. They're too entangled in their own wars to care about us. Perfect. Oh, that's actually quite funny. So because we get some amenities from the Hive Nexus building itself, uh, we're actually in the positive for amenities, and since we have zero pops to work with, we have high amenities, because well, anything divided by zero is undefined, and presumably a lot according to Paradox, because it's high amenities, not low. I was gonna build a bunch of strongholds in order to enable martial law, but it seems that that is not actually entirely necessary. We're only losing 25% resources, and um, honestly, that's fine. Let's see, these guys are probably going to intercept me. They're attacking Cherton, and Cherton is uh, god knows where. Okay. Now, it's not going to be theirs for long, because we're going to be taking the actual population out of them. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Looks like we're purging enough robots to actually be in the positive for alloys. <laughs> That's something. Oh man, that's not good. Or actually, never mind. I thought these guys were going to finally attack me, but it looks like that's not the case. Perfect. Alright, this is our chance. Let's merge up our fleets and uh, attack. Their big stack. Oh my god, looks like these guys actually ran out of power. Because they're getting minus 75% to armor and uh, shields. They, at least they were uh, for the little time being. Alright, let's see how this massive battle will play out. The big thing is that they're, if their ships actually get too near, uh, they're going to cause problems because the corvettes are not going to be easily hit by our weapons. And uh, of course, if we can't hit them, we can't damage them. And if we can't damage them, we can't kill them. If we can't kill them, they can kill us. But we can't. Which would suck. But of course, that didn't happen. Thank God. Ooh, looks like our first colony has been established once more. As you can tell by this point, a lot of this uh, reviving economy thing actually has to do with a lot of micromanagement on your planets. If we hadn't focused hard on actually micromanaging our buildings, our economy would be in the gutter right now. And uh, even though minus 705 energy credits per month may seem like the gutter, it really isn't. It's quite a nice position at this point in time. Considering how our economy in other areas ain't doing too bad. Ah, oh yeah, looks like our planets are getting back online.
Oh my god, I think I know what's going on. I'm conquering some of these new worlds, and my old ones are actually getting their pops resettled due to our policy of, uh... Well, looks like we don't actually have a say in our policy of uh, land appropriation. That's great. But uh, generally, our pops are getting lost on the worlds that we colonize, and uh, I'm seeing a bunch of spooters everywhere now. I mean, that ain't bad, but... That's not the spooters I want, on the planets I want. Which kinda sucks. Oh, wow. We're actually back at positive and energy credits. Wonderful. And uh, this war is uh, soon gonna end. Oh, wow, horse compass. Let's go kill them. Oh, looks like there was a status quo piece. Uh, it seems to be these guys. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Oh, come on. This is what I hate the most. When these guys just uh, go ahead and ruin my borders. Those pieces of shit. They just have two ships and they're just out to get me. Ah, scumbags. And uh, speaking of scumbags, let's go ahead and uh, kill his course compass. Let's make sure these gamblers get the, what they uh, deserve. Yep. And there they have it. Alright, looks like that little bothersome fleet has been dealt with. And now we can send out our ships in peace. Ooh, stagnant ascendancy. And these guys are equivalent. Well, we can probably take them out relatively easily if we wanted to. But at this point, eh, there's really no point. Uh, we're just performing some cleanup on our systems. We have uh, just a couple extra to take care of. And uh, after these guys, well, the empire that was originally our greatest threat will be no more. Alright, this is the last battle of the war. A land battle. Get some defensive columns, facing modified troopers. More like modified spooters. Alrighty. And the end of the Holy Lachaparan Covenant is here. And with that comes the end of the video. I believe we've done plenty of work to uh, justify this empire being almost entirely recovered. And now at the end of the video, we have things that are back to normal. The secondary sacrificial grounds are looking good. 873 pops, nearly all of them actual normal pops. And with that, thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, join my Discord if you want, join my Patreon if you can, and uh, of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.